dudes and dudettes. How are you guys? Welcome back to What's the Damage and I am going to be trying really hard to keep my blood pressure under control because today's topic is really aggravating. It is the thing that most irritates me on this entire world, you know, uh, and I just I don't even know where to begin, you know, I really don't. And I have covered a lot of, uh, you know, uh, irritating topics here on this channel, but this one here is one that it's going to be really hard for me to control myself, you know, in terms of cursing and letting out my anger. It's racism. Okay, let's talk about racism today. Now, I'm pretty sure that many of you know exactly how this works. You know, I mean, you can't deny that even if you're a person who, uh, who's very optimistic and tries to always see the bright side in things, you cannot deny that we today live in a very racist society. I'm not talking about the country that you're in right now, but the world in general, you know? The world is a very racist place, you know? There, are, there is a lot of prejudice right now all over the place and with specific people, like we have African Americans and Asians who suffer the most persecution you know for different reasons and there are different accounts you know for different scenarios but I'm gonna be focusing more on the racist side of things you know some more about African Americans for example now here's the thing I come from the United States I actually grew up there today I live in Brazil and I have had the opportunity to observe how racism and prejudice works in these two countries you know I cannot deny I love America I really do you know but I cannot deny that it is a very racist place you know because there's a very long history of racism and prejudice in that country you know and I saw it firsthand while I was living there you know and I see it now from far away but like I think that it's because like, I mean, we're talking about a country who has had hundreds of years of enslavement, you know, and a lot of really, uh, let's say, aggressive mindsets towards people who are different than them, you know, so I have seen this in action many times. And you cannot deny that the most oppressed people today are African Americans, you know, they are still, they, they still suffer today from racism, even though, in my opinion, it doesn't make any sense for you to still think this way today, you know, I mean, it would have made sense 30 or 40 years ago, but you still being racist today, you still practicing prejudice against people, to me, does not make a single lick of sense, you know, because, I mean, like, if you're racist, to me, you're just dumb. You know, I mean, you, you can't be a racist person and at the same time be intelligent. You know, it, does, it you can't be like a, a smart human being and also have racist thoughts. It does not make sense. It does not compute, you know. So to me, you know, if you if you have any semblance of racism inside of you at all whatsoever, to me, you are pretty much everything in the book. An, an idiot, a moron, a jackass, an asshole, a douche, you know, all of these words that I can't actually say on YouTube without getting in trouble. But I'm going to, uh, going to hold myself back from saying all of the other ones that I live literally can't. Now, the first thing to address here is the historical background, you know? African Americans, for example, have been enslaved in the past, you know? So it's kind of like back in the day, America was a very racist place. And even as early as the 60s or 70s, you know, there was still very heavy racism around the world. And even though today it's much it's much lighter, to, it, it still exists. And even though today it's much more, uh, how can I say? Today, it, there's much less. The, the, the little that there is, is very, very strong, you know? Not to say that there's not a lot, you know? But when I say a little, I'm comparing to back in the day, man, you know? I mean, you don't see African Americans being put in cages today or, or being used as a, as a slave laborer, you know? At least as far as I know. But so uh, African Americans back in the day, when they were finally released from slavery, they had a lot of difficulty re-entering society and finding work because they were always seen as inferior, you know? And like, you, you were a slave for so long. You just got free. How are you going to find a job, you know? So as the decades went by, they started to isolate themselves in impoverished communities you know which still happens today you know in ghettos and slums and they would turn to crime to try to feed themselves and their families so that's why you see so many criminals being african-american it's not because all african-americans are criminals it's just because of this historical background that they have you know that their ancestors had to turn to crime to survive so it was it was, it was instinct you know and unfortunately, we still see a lot of this happening today, you know? And uh, the thing is that, I mean, it's really, really hard for you to be a black person today in America, for example, because depending on the place where you live and you work and you study, you will still experience racism to some degree. The worst example that we saw recently was the death of George Floyd, who was literally murdered by a white police officer, you know, because he was trying to use a counterfeit bill, you know, to try to pay uh, for something. And, and hey, the verdict is, I don't know if he even knew that it, the, the bill was counterfeit or not, you know? The, 
mean, your guess is as good as mine on that one. I don't know too much information about that. But after he was killed by the police officer for no reason at all except for a racist attack, it sparked something that I actually thought was really admirable, which was the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement, you know, which sparked riots, you know, and protests all over the country and in other parts of the world as well that really made people rally together. Not just African Americans, but people of different races and color as well, you know, to protest against this, which I hope did have some kind of effect, you know, I mean, racism still exists and it will for a long time, but hopefully it will be a little less now. Hopefully people will wake up a little bit, even though I think it's a little hard because depending on how old the person is, it's really hard to change their minds, you know, like uh, our the, the old generation before us, our parents and grandparents, they have racism embedded into their minds, just like it's instinctively, it's, it's, it, they, they have it instinctively embedded because that's how their parents raised them, you know, and they have gotten to an age where they just can't be taught anything new. So a lot of the racism that we see today comes from the previous generation, you know, and our generation suffers from this a lot, you know, hopefully the next generation won't, you know, our children, you know, and hopefully we can every generation there will be less and less racism and we can probably maybe want to even get rid of it altogether but i unfortunately do not think that my generation will see the end of racism as we know it i'm sorry to sound pessimistic but we've still got a long way to go now, if you consider uh, black people in general to be inferior to you, then you are really, really blind. Aside from being a moron, you are completely blind because let's take a look at how African Americans have infiltrated our culture as we know it and have risen above and to, to prove themselves much better than everyone else. Let's take a look at, for example, uh, the best basketball player in the world, you know, of all time was Michael Jordan, who was black, okay? The best soccer or football player of all time was Pele, who was black, okay? The best MMA fighter of all time, at least in my opinion, opinion Anderson Silva, who is black, and he's still active today. Uh, let's see, uh, where else can we go? Uh, oh, for a time, the most powerful man in the world, Barack Obama, was black. He was president of the United States for a few years. I really miss Obama. Really good guy. And, uh, and also, for a very long time, the most powerful actor in Hollywood, Will Smith, was black. Okay? He's not the best today, but at one point, he literally dominated all of Hollywood, you know, and he was, to me, in my opinion, one of the best actors I had ever seen in my entire life, if not the best. Want to talk about music? In my opinion, the greatest entertainer of all time, Michael Jackson, who was originally black. I say originally because he was born African American. He does have the genes inside of him, but he developed vitiligo and bleached his skin, so he died white on the outside, but he was still black. So, to me, you know, and I, I can go on and on, man. There, there are so many other examples, you know, and uh, there are jokes that we make about African-American men, you know, black guys having big, you know, um, uh, <laughs> how can I say uh, on YouTube? They have big weenuses, you know, they've got big stuff down there, big packages, you know, and also they have better uh, development cycles so they can get buff quicker, they look better, you know, and we have seen a lot of African Americans infiltrate cinema, you know, like we had the Black Panther movie some time ago, which had an all black cast, which was very well acclaimed, you know, so I mean, like, if you really stop to think about it, there are many ways where African Americans actually prove to be superior to other people, like for example, whites, you know, so it's all a matter of you just kind of opening up your mind a little bit and, and stopping with the racism to see what you're missing that's right in front of you you know same thing with asians you know there, there, there's been this thing going on about the, the the asian hate crimes that have been happening all over the place because of the coronavirus you know and i, I talked about that a long time ago in another video but the point is that like people are practicing uh, hatred and hate crimes against asians just because one or a few asians uh or, or, or the ones who were responsible for the coronavirus happening in the first place you know it's like you're so narrow-minded and so idiotic that you think that all asians can be blamed for this you know and it's really unfair xenophobia and racism are actually very similar but xenophobia Phobia is more towards people of a certain uh, a certain race, you know, I think racism is more for the color of their skin, but there, there, there's a whole uh, candid topic there, you know, but uh, the point is that it's wrong. Now, there has been a collective outcry from all over the world, you know, t uh, that are protesting these crimes, you know, these things going towards Asians. And I think, unfortunately, it seems to me like there's never going to be a balance, you know, because if you notice, like, sometimes we will have, like, less racism, you know, but more homophobia. You know, homophobia today is really strong. You know, the LGBT community is so heavily persecuted, you know. Now, I'm not gay myself. I'm heterosexual, but I, I, I actually really admire the LGBT community because they are all about 
not love. You know, I mean, depending on your religious views, you know, you might disagree with that, but I really don't care, man, you know. Do you know why I don't care? Because I'm straight. I like women, okay, and I hope that women like me. And if you're uh, if you're gay, you're a guy who likes guys or a girl who likes girls, whatever. I don't give a crap. Do whatever makes you happy, you know. Just don't start practicing bestiality, you know, because then I will judge you as wrong, even though I can't judge you. I literally don't have the right to judge anyone, but I just will think it's wrong, you know, if you want to screw around with cats or dogs or anything. But the point is that I just don't care. You know, because in my skin, I do what I feel is right to try to make the world a better place and the people around me happy, you know? That's my only uh, goal here. One of the many reasons why I still have a YouTube channel after five years, you know? So the point is that you really can't judge anyone for, for being different than you. And when you think that you have the right to judge, that's when you start practicing the racism, you know? And then when there's very when there's less xenophobia, there's more rate, there's more uh there's uh, there, when there's less homophobia, there's more xenophobia, you know? So it seems like we're never gonna get a proper balance and towards the lower end of the spectrum, you know? So it would be really nice if we could have less of all of them, you know? Now, because the last generation is trying to instill in this generation, their kids, you know, me, for example, my parents are very, very prejudiced against many different things, but I'm not gonna get into that. But when I was younger, they tried to implement these thoughts into me, you know? And then when I got older and started thinking more independently, then we started arguing, you know? Today, I don't live with them and I'm very grateful for that you know because we don't really get along too much in certain topics you know but the point is that my, it's too late to re-indoctrinate my parents with different thoughts, you know, because in their time, back when they were younger, what they see today was considered as wrong back then. So they seem really lost. So instead of trying to accept it and understand it, they just, you know, they get into the racist territory, you know, and try to judge everyone and say that this is wrong because they're just frustrated. The whole last generation is frustrated. Now, I don't think that my generation will see the end of racism. I really don't think we will because we still have a very long way to go but we can start today by instilling in our children uh, 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 more empathy you know more understanding and compassion and love you know and being really careful for our grandparents not to get their paws on our kids you know because then that's when it's gonna they're gonna start to overlap you know there, there are many generational clashes here that people find wrong so it's really hard the lines get very blurred very quickly so yeah you know it's just crazy man I'm pretty sure I'll probably live to be until 90 and then die. And before that, I won't see the end of racism or prejudice in general, you know. But hopefully my kids will see this happening, you know. Unfortunately, it's something that will always exist because humans will never be perfect. No, we are not a perfect species, you know. But we can definitely see a time when there will be much less, you know, because you have so much to do, man. You know, like if you have racist, like well, how can you even have time to be racist, you know, because I mean, the world has gotten much better, you know, there is much more understanding today. People are more open to things, you know, and yet there are still some douchebags who can, who can still find the time to be racist, you know, like, dude, go watch Netflix, you know, go play video games. I don't know, go out for a job, make a YouTube channel and do videos, you know, but don't share your opinions because you're going to get canceled, you know, but just uh, how I don't understand how man you know it's just really freaking frustrating I don't think my generation will see this lessening too much you know but uh, hey I mean you guys have to consider that we have still come a very long way than we were many many years ago so we do deserve merit for that at least you know at least I think so but I think that's it guys I think that's all I wanted to talk about you know uh, I've actually gotten a lot of my opinions out here a much more serious video than usual but I wanted to talk about this you know because I think it's important as a as a digital content creator and a public figure even with a very small audience to try to instill a little bit of my opinion in you guys and hopefully you agree because if you don't agree if you comment on this video saying that you disagree with anything I said we're gonna have a hard time in the comments okay but anyway if you like this video then please give it a like subscribe to my channel because I release videos literally every single day sometimes one sometimes two and at random times of the day so you never know so you gotta hit the notification about to know exactly what time they're going to be coming out you know and that's it guys all right this is chazzy signing out for now and as always i will see you guys in the next video roll the outro screen